Gospel according to Mark, chapter 11. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Oh Christ. Welcome everybody to our worship service on Palm Sunday at Trinity Lutheran Church. Today we journey through praise with joy on our lips and then we will travel through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Today we wave palm branches singing Hosanna, Hosanna, Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God, and then we will enter Holy Week, and we will ponder upon the complicated mystery of Good Friday. And in all this we know, the light will break forth once again. O glory, Lord and honor to you, Redeemer King.
mixing love and hope together, you pave the way to the kingdom. You touch the cup of grace to our parched lips. You teach us the songs of salvation. And as you come to us, you bring healing for our brokenness, peace for our troubled lives, hope for our doubting minds. May we empty ourselves of everything which keeps us from following you, so we may receive these gifts and more from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Jesus, Son of David, Anointed One, ride among us now. Open our hearts to your way, so we may rejoice in you. Amen. Dear friends, it's Palm Sunday. We have waved palm branches and cried Hosanna, granted, <laughs> only via video this year, but still, children, it was so nice to see you. And then we sang to Jesus, all glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King. It's a joyful occasion. How are you doing today? Are you into it? Are you joyful because it's Palm Sunday? If you are, bless you, truly. Can you share why? I am looking for that joy and I will look for that joy in this sermon because honestly, I am not feeling it right now. I am bogged down by thoughts of a third wave and by all I see that's wrong in the world. I am bogged down by what looks like increasing displays of intolerance and hatred, not only on social media, but with actions in broad daylight. Think of the women in hijabs that have been attacked in Edmonton and Calgary. I am concerned by far-right symbols at protests that moreover defy public health rules. I am concerned about the ongoing destruction of creation in Alberta and the world. It seems to me humanity is on a suicide mission. And yeah, I am also concerned that I have two one-year-old nieces who grow up without knowing me thanks to COVID. Yet, my life is not by far as hard as the lives of the people who cheered Jesus. Most people at that time were quite poor. They worked hard for little or no gain and died before old age. Childbirth and sickness were dangerous and could lead to death. To make things worse, they didn't live in a free country. They had been conquered and were at the mercy of the Roman military. The occupation made life harder and humiliated the people's national pride on a regular basis. And then these people who had such diminished opportunities, who lived such precarious lives, heard of Jesus, a man who healed people and drove out demons for free who fed thousands and taught like a real prophet. Could he be the one they had been waiting for? These people knew of the prophecies of a new king, a descendant of King David, who in the last days would defeat God's enemies and restore God's people to a state of everlasting peace in which they would prosper. Could Jesus be the one? The way he approaches Jerusalem, Jesus does signal very deliberately that yes, he is a king. Regular people walked, 
king's road. And the old kings, like David, would have ridden on a donkey. When the people saw Jesus, they must have thought of the prophecy in Zechariah 9. Here it is. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. End quote. And the people got it. They understood what Jesus was signaling. And they greet him like the long-awaited promised king and deliverer. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. That is why they are joyful and excited. They dare to hope. They pin their hopes on Jesus. But what they don't know, and I do, is how the story continues. Jesus will not ascend on the throne and kick out the Romans and bring back the good old days, take Israel back or make Israel great again. Jerusalem, the capital, the center of religion and power, does not recognize him as king. If it did, dignitaries would have come out to greet him, as was custom, but none did. And then in the last verse of our story, it says, He entered Jerusalem. The parade had fizzled, and he went into that city alone. He goes to check out the temple, the house of God, and what's going on there, which does not please him. And then he goes back to the village outside Jerusalem where he is staying. Not a king's welcome. And we know that the city and the temple will continue to reject him over the coming week. And that in fact, Jesus is heading not for coronation, but for execution. We know that on Friday the crowds will not shout Hosanna, but crucify him. It is possible that in that crowd were some from the previous Palm Sunday who were disappointed that Jesus did not fulfill their hopes, solve their problems in the way they had thought he would, by seizing power. So again, I ask, why should I be joyful today on Palm Sunday? Jesus will be rejected and die. That prospect is awful enough. But what's more, he will not seize power and take Israel back for the people. So that what does that mean for my concerns today? Unfortunately, that Jesus will not squash the racists and haters and politicians I find stupid and those who wreck our planet. Because squashing is not Jesus' way. Honestly, I find that disappointing because I am really angry at these people. And if Jesus won't deal with them once and for all, I will be angry at him also. Isn't he supposed to be a God of justice? Yes, Jesus is all about justice. And he does see and share the concerns for sure. He did heal and feed and teach after all and speak subversive truth to power, but he is nonviolent and he is love. His way is not one of destroying enemies, as I would like it. Remember elsewhere he said, love your enemies. And if I'm completely honest, I must admit, if Jesus came as a king, who destroyed enemies and evildoers in order to set up a perfect kingdom, I would perish. We all would perish. None of us would have a chance. Instead, he came as one who took the evil of the world upon himself. He showed 
exposed and unmasked our my evil and violence by allowing it to be unleashed on him. He took it all, and the more he took it and stayed true and loving, the more it was unleashed. That is the nature of violence and hate, my friends. Jesus became the scapegoat for all our grievances, resentments, uncontrolled anger, vengeance. And all the while he kept loving and forgiving until death. That is a different way of bringing peace, my friends. Not by squashing the other side, but by letting it unmask itself and then forgiving that other side and still loving it. Me, you. That, my friends, is where I can find joy today on Palm Sunday. That awful, awful thing Jesus put himself through for our sakes. It's not the kind of peace and solution I wanted in my human heart, but it is one that unmasks and disarms us all. Hate and violence and force are disarmed and lose their hold on us. We become peacemakers, truth tellers, healers, reconcilers. And when we have power, we no longer use it over others, but divest ourselves, even if it costs us as it did Jesus. And once I understand that, I can say, yes, this is the kind of king I want, actually. Welcome, Hosanna, blessed are you, dear King Jesus, dear servant king. Thank you for not squashing us or others. All glory, Lord, and honor to you. Save us. Save us from how screwed up we are. Bring peace. Heal the earth. Hosanna. The Palm Sunday parade then becomes an expression of love. We, in hindsight today, cheer Jesus because we know that he is the Prince of Peace. Justice, yes, but with peace and love, with truth and reconciliation. So we cheer Jesus because we love Jesus. And we not only cheer, we follow him on the way of love and peacemaking and divestment. Perhaps Jesus accepted the cheering of the crowd back then because he knew and needed that expression of love before his suffering. Perhaps that was also why the young donkey, who had never been ridden before, in his donkey wisdom, let Jesus ride on him as an expression of love to that different king who came not to squash, but to redeem all creation. Amen.
Let us pray our prayers of intercession together. In our lives this week, we turned away from your triumphal entry. The words in our heads and on our lips have been, can't, won't, never, impossible. Believing our problems are too deep for you, we have underestimated your power and stewed in our own misery. We repent of this hard-heartedness. Hear our prayer, O God. We are facing another Holy Week, another Easter, distant from loved ones threatened by COVID. Remind us that your love binds us together in deeper ways than we know, and your hope spurs us on to face each day as it comes. We pray for loved ones in our midst and in need of healing. For Wendy, for Dorothea, for Nolene, for Elsie, for Edith, and for Rudy. We pray for the Berub family as they lay a lair to rest this weekend. Comfort them in their sorrow and bring peace in the midst of tears. Hear our prayer, O God. God of grace, we long to hear, we long to be dear disciples, washing each other's feet. We long to be faithful companions awake in the darkest hour. We long to follow in your footsteps, even if they lead to crosses on a barren hillside. These are the desires of our hearts. Hear our prayer, O God. Come now, gracious God, into a world that longs for change, a world that needs your love, a world full of your own children, a world ripe with hope and potential. We pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We have a few announcements for you today. It's Holy Week. Be sure to tune in to our Maude Thursday Zoom Supper to reflect on the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples. Let's gather in community online to share supper together on Thursday, April 1st, also known as Maude Thursday. Join in at six o'clock for some visiting, learning, sharing, and experiencing the stripping of the altar in preparation for Good Friday. Here's the plan. Prepare a simple meal ahead of time, including your favorite homemade or store-bought bread, and anything else you would like to go along with it. A few ideas are soup, cheese, or sausage. Include something to drink, such as wine, juice, or even grapes. Join the Zoom meeting at 6 p.m. The link will be on our website and in our email blasts. Come on your own or with your family. Be prepared to share something about the meal you have prepared. This event will run from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you. Contact Sylvia with any questions you may have. Also, we will be having a joint pre-recorded Good Friday service available for everyone starting this Friday, both on social media and our website. An in-person German Good Friday service will also be held at 10 a.m please call the church office to pre-register for this event. An in-person outdoor Easter vigil will be held at Horlock Park this Saturday, starting at 6 p.m. That's weather permitting. This is also an event that you need to pre-register for, so do call the church office to secure your spot. Next week, our Easter services will be online. We know it's hard to face another Easter during a time of pandemic. However, we are aiming to make the best of what we have. 
Make sure to tune into our Easter services, both in German and in English. The pastors will be taking some time off after Easter Sunday. While they will both be out of office, one of them will always be on call for emergency situations. We wish them some good time away and a refreshing start to spring. Finally, the Trinity team is scheduled for publication April 30th. Our theme this issue is Connection. Please send your submissions for consideration to office at trinity-lutheran.ab.ca. Thank you so much and have a great week. Receive God's blessing today. Blessed is the one who comes to us by the way of love poured out in abandon. Blessed is the one who walks towards us by the way of grace that holds us fast. Blessed is the one who calls us to follow in the name of the way of blessing, in the path of joy. In the name of the Creator, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.